You are about to meet a living legend. Meet Morgan Weisling. Morgan, welcome to, I don't even know what to call this show. I don't have a show name yet, but uh, welcome to day number 180. Uh, thank you. It's really nice to meet you. Uh, be asked to be on this. Well, it's uh, it's great to have you on. I'm excited to to learn more about you and learn more about what you do. How long have you been uh, doing this now? Uh, 35, 35 years of professional making my living as an artist. You must have started at 12. <laughs> I wish. Um, <laughs> actually, I started, I started earlier than 12 if I were to count those years. I mean, uh, when I was 12 years old, I was uh, airbrushing t-shirts at a local SWAT meet doing Harley Davidson t-shirts with it, with my first airbrush. So really? at 12, 12 years old, I was already uh, working it out. Cool. Cool. So what are you going to, what are you going to do for us today? What are you going to talk about? Well, um, when I was asked about doing this, I, I really, you know, I, I went back first of all and looked at some of the other days too that you've done. And uh, I see that pretty much every subject matter has been covered under the sun already. <laughs> you know, so, what's fascinating though is everybody tends to do it differently. Everybody tends to have, it looks that way, but underneath, um, underneath we're all doing the same thing. You know, we're all trying to hit the same principles usually. Um, and using those, but in our own personal way. So anything I'm going to share today is not probably new, but it will be my way of looking at it. But uh, I, I find art has basic principles that we all, you know, pretty much uh, adhere to. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. It's it's a couple of different approaches to doing it. But so what are you going to talk about? Well, um, I thought I would uh, bring out my uh, pastels. And oh. um, I'm actually going to do a portrait. At least I'll get started on one. You know, I know we don't have a lot of time, um, but I'm doing a series of, of uh, uh, cowboy portraits in pastel. So I thought, well, I'll just bring you into, you know, the little world of mine that I'm into right now. So Perfect. pastel, pastel has sort of uh, been a new passion for me because I found uh, I had to do a demo. Uh, they asked me to do an hour and a half demo at the Prix de West, which is the uh, National Cowboy Hall of Fame, you know, in Oklahoma. But they said, you only have an hour and a half. And I, what can I do in an hour and a half in, in oil? You know, I, right. the way I work in my oil paintings is, is allowing things to dry. And you know, I, it's always so hard to do something that looks finished in an hour and a half. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to buy a set of pastels and I'm going to, I'm going to do it in pastel. Then there's no drying time involved. And, I just fell in love with it because uh, there was no drying time involved and I can do something fairly quickly, you know, and I thought, well, we'll see what I can get away with today. And, uh, oh, so this is start. probably the first time ever anybody's ever seen you do pastel other than Prix de West. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Right. And it's just like painting and it's all the same. I paint with those pastels the exact same way as I paint with oil. So whatever I talk about, it's just as though I'm working in oil. All right, so we're excited to see that. We'll be back in just a second, and uh, I'm going to make a couple announcements, and then I'll be back. Okay. Right. So today's guest is Morgan Weisling, and my name is Eric Rhodes. I'm the publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air magazines, and today is day number 180 live. We've been here 180 days in a row for you, uh, trying to get everybody through uh, your quarantine, your coronavirus times, uh, help you stay positive and upbeat during this time when, uh, well, you know, it's kind of hard to be positive and upbeat, quite frankly, with all the things that are going on. So uh, my goal here is just to give you something different, something to do, something to think about, something that would be fun for you, and interviewing artists and having them do demonstrations. I've got some other things coming up where I'll do some marketing. I've got some uh, experts in different areas lined up. You're going to have a lot of fun if you just continue to do this. So yesterday... Pretty interesting day. You know, I may look well-rested, but um, I, um, I had a, a bit of a day. Uh, so what I did is I hopped off the broadcast, and I got in the car, Lori and I got in the car, and we drove all the way from the Adirondacks to New Hampshire and uh, did 
some site selection, some viewing, some uh, seeing where we're going to be painting, seeing the hotel, meeting with some folks, and then rushed back to be here for you guys. And it is spectacular. I'm going to show you a couple of things if I can uh, if I can find a way to get to them here. Just give me a second and I will do that. Uh, but I wanted to show you, uh, let's see if I can, let's just see if I can find them here. Or maybe I can't find them. Here we go. First off, I wanted to show you this image. Now, it's a little hard to see this image because, you know, it's a little uh, off. But this image is an Eric Capel, Eric Copel painting. I always get his name wrong. And Eric lives in Jackson, New Hampshire. And this is a spot that is literally right across the street from our hotel. And this is a spot that the great Hudson River School painters painted. And it is absolutely a beautiful uh, stream and, and beautiful area with this wonderful um, vista in the background. And it's just one of the many places that we're going to go. And so there's lots of, lots of opportunities to see a lot of beautiful art. And uh, I will have prepared for you sometime this week some more images so you can kind of get a feel for, uh, for what, uh, what you're going to be painting. But Fall Color Week is going to be spectacular. The fall color is already changing in, in New Hampshire, but not as much as it's going to be changing by the time we're there. The, the difference between the Adirondacks, I've learned, and New Hampshire is that the Adirondacks is mostly pine trees. And in New Hampshire, it's mostly deciduous trees. And as a result, you get these hills that are covered with oranges and reds and distant hills, and plus these massive mountains in the presidential range. So we're gonna be staying at a really cool old, uh, classic old resort. It's an old, one of the great old hotels. And it's right in the middle of all this scenery. I mean, you literally could spend the entire week painting off the balcony of the hotel and getting iconic scenes like that. Uh, we have arranged for us, that we're actually going to arrange to close the golf course. There's a golf course there that it's going to give us access to a lot of different views. And we have a map of all the different places that we're going to go, all of which are pretty close, actually. Uh, there's maybe one or two spots that are maybe 30, 40 minutes away, but most everything's 15 minutes away or less. And literally, it could paint right on the property. If we had a rain day, you can paint on the porch of the property, and it's going to be spectacular. So that's called Fall Color Week. It's an event that I do every year, and I do it in a different place every year. And the idea is to paint fall color, uh, to really get experience in painting the color because it's tough to do it. Uh, I think it's tough to do it and get it right so it doesn't look too garish and, and so on. So anyway, Fall Color Week is taking place the 12th through the 19th in the White Mountains. Uh, we have plenty of seats. This is the only year that we've had seats left. We always sell out. We've sold out 10 years in a row. And uh, we sell out of the Adirondacks 10 years in a row. And we, we have not been able to hold any events live this year. But this year, we are actually now going to be able to do it. Uh, everybody's going to have to, you know, socially distance and so on. Of course, when you're outdoors painting, just keep six feet apart. You're going to be fine. But this is uh, going to be a spectacular week. The, the scenery, everything is just beautiful. And so that's called Fall Color Week. And you can still sign up. Um, everything's included, your hotel, your meals, uh, the painting uh, that we do. You know, you're gonna, all you're going to need is transportation. You're gonna, you can share transportation with others. And uh, or you don't have to have transportation. You just come to the hotel and paint there every day and you'll be completely satisfied. And quite frankly, it's so spectacular. And, and I went out and I looked at some of those those locations yesterday. I also went out and, and I saw a painting that Eric Capel had done. I'm going to see if I can find that for you um, right now. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find it. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit dis disheveled and disorganized, but uh, Anyway, that happens from time to time in my world. Uh, yes. Okay, here's the painting of Eric Capel. Now, my photography isn't great, but as you can see from this painting, uh, this is a, oops, hang on a second. I got to take that slide off. You can see from this painting, uh, this is Eric standing next to this. It's about an eight foot long painting, and he's a tall guy. And, uh, this is a spectacular piece that he did, and that's where we're going to be painting, and that's what the color is going to be like. 
you're going to be able to see this painting. It's on display at the uh, local historical society. Uh, it's in their permanent collection. And they also have some of his paintings for sale there. When, when we visited there yesterday, he sold two paintings uh, while we were there, which was pretty cool. But uh, it's really nice to see what you're going to see here and where you're going to be painting and see some of these scenes. And so that's called Fall Color Week. And you don't want to miss that because it's going to be spectacular. So the other things that are going on, well, first off, uh, I mentioned that I was going to give away a pair of value specs. And I am a man of my word, so I'm going to do that. And uh, so value specs will be uh, the winner is uh, Ken Grody of Dayton, Ohio. And value specs are basically these red glasses. We had to formulate the right kind of red. So when you're training yourself to learn about uh, values, uh, this is something you can do that really helps you learn values. And the winner is thumbs up and applause to J. Kenneth Grody of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we also want you to know that tomorrow, if you're for comments for today's broadcast, Tomorrow, we're also giving away a digital subscription to Plan Air Magazine. Now, I should mention that if you don't have a subscription to Plan Air Magazine, shame on you. Uh, Plan Air Magazine is the number one selling art magazine nationwide. Yes, nationwide. And we're pretty proud of that. Uh, it's for sale now in 278 Michael's stores. It's the only magazine for sale in Michael's stores. So we're pretty, I mean, the only art magazine for sale in Michael's stores. And then uh, we are now the number one selling art magazine nationwide in Barnes & Noble. We outsell the art and photography, all the magazines in the art and photography category. So that's pretty cool. We're pretty proud of that. Uh, so anyway, you can win a copy of digital, uh, the digital copy of Plein Air Magazine. Keep in mind that it has in it, it has 20% uh, more content than normal uh, in the print magazines because we have extra room for it. A couple of things that I want to let you know about. First off, we have the artist and selfie competition. We've been doing self-portraits, as you know, and uh, a lot of us were doing them at the beginning of COVID back 180 days ago. And uh, I'm trying to get people to do self-portraits for historical purposes. I would like you to have uh, a portrait of you or have you do regular self-portraits every couple of years. Uh, because it's part of history. And I'd like paintings of other artists. I'd like you to be doing selfies of you. I'd like you to do paintings of your studios and paintings of artists doing plein air. And so we're doing a competition. The uh, entry for that is October 10th. You need to get them in. And then we're going to give away the prizes on Realism Live. And, and uh, we will have a public broadcast for that part of things. So you can see the broadcast uh, if you're not part of Realism Live. But then again, why would you not want to be, right? Uh, coming soon, very soon, uh, I went over to Russia back in March, right before COVID, and I filmed this amazing uh, video with the, the Russian master, Nikolai Bokhin, and it is going to be epic. I mean, it's just spectacular, and that's going to be coming soon, so I want to make you aware of that. Uh, we have also... Now, some, some new things uh, for Realism Live. We have Dean Mitchell has been uh, added to the faculty of Realism Live, which is our online five-day virtual. Essentially, it's like art school for five days, uh, just a flood of information with the top artists in the world. Dean Mitchell is going to be teaching. Uh, I just mentioned Eric Koppel. Uh, he's going to be there teaching. Aaron Meads is teaching beginning drawing for you. Uh, we have Jesus Emmanuel Villarreal uh, teaching Todd Casey, Stephen Bauman, Cornelia Hernes, uh, Jean Stern will be speaking, Mark D'Alessio, uh, Tony Serenai, Connor Walton, William A. Schneider, Kathy Odom and Kathy Anderson, Jeff Legg, Daniel Graves, Daniel Gerhardt, Victoria Herrera, Julia Aristides, Daniel Sprick, Joshua Larocque, Rose Franson, and Graydon Parrish. And last but not least, no, I'm not going to tell you. That's too big. I got to tell you. No, I'm not going to tell you. Well, I can't tell you yet till the paperwork is, the ink is dry. But I'll tell you maybe this week, maybe tomorrow. But we have, uh, I just got to tell you that once everybody sees this name, they're going to be like, how could I not sign up for this? I mean, first off, all these names, these are world-class artists. And, but when you see what's coming tomorrow on top of these world-class artists, 
you're going to get, you're going to want to get signed up. And of course, if you get signed up before the 30th of this month, you're going to save a couple hundred bucks. The price is increasing. So it's four days, but there is a beginner's day on October 20th. And if you're wanting to learn how to do portraits or still life or figures or landscapes, uh, uh, you know, basically any subject, we've got the beginner's day and then we have all these amazing artists. And so hang tight. We're going to have a major announcement, but don't delay. You've got a hundred percent money back guarantee. If you watch this thing and you don't like it and you say, I didn't like it, we'll give you your money back. You watch it all day, first day. And if you don't like it, just let us know. We'll give you your money back. We're going to cut the cord for the rest of the days, but you'll, you, you won't have to pay for that first day. Now don't take advantage of that. Don't, don't, don't not come, but we would love for you to come. That's realism live. Also, a couple other things that are happening. First off, the plein air convention is going to be held in person in May if it's allowed. And again, there's a hundred percent money back guarantee if you have to cancel because of if the COVID stuff is still going on then, but uh, it, it probably won't be. Uh, let's hope not anyway. Uh, plein air podcast. You want to make sure you look for that every week, a new interview with a different artist of plein air podcast at outdoorpainter.com. And, uh, one of these days, I'm going to get this done. I've got the, all the agenda worked out for Paint Russia. We're, we've got the pricing worked out. We're just going to got to get it out to you now. And so uh, it should be any minute now, but go to Paint Russia and register if you want to go to Russia with us. It's spectacular and it's a trip of a lifetime. And the Russian art that you're going to see is going to blow you away. So you don't want to miss that. Now, today at 3 p.m., we have a very special guest, and that is Morgan Weisling. He's uh, got a video out that he did many years ago called Painting for the Impatient, and it's essentially a portrait workshop, and that's today at 3 p.m. We also have this other video that Morgan did. It's called In the Studio with Morgan Weisling called Homework, and that's a, a little at all classic as well. These were done a, a while back, but uh, I want to show you a couple of images of Morgan's work, and he may want to talk about these but I'll just kind of flip through them uh, because he's our guest today. And obviously Morgan focuses on historic West and uh, just does absolutely fabulous work. And I'm just really excited to see him do a pastel portrait. So today Morgan's going to be all set up and he's, he's there with us now. Morgan, there you are. I can't get all of us in at the same time. Sorry. Okay. Well, is that Annie Oakley? That I like yeah, it. Yeah, that is uh, a portrait I did just last year for um, the Pre to West show over there at the National Cowboy Hall of Fame, and uh, I'm I'm showing this right now. I know I don't think you can see all of it there, but uh, we, see, we see pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm pretty much what you call a narrative painter, and I'm usually telling some sort of a historic story or uh, a story in general uh, that I'm trying to get across. And when you're putting together something like this, and it's obviously, you know, she lived over 100 years ago, um, you know, I'm trying to piece together historic photographs as well as bring in live models and then throw it all together into some sort of cohesive storytelling single image that kind of represented her that's you know a, a real task actually when you're trying to do something special and so i thought i'd talk about planning ahead um i'm gonna do a little pastel portrait in a couple minutes and um it, as i was doing that i was thinking ahead already you know just like i do even when i'm planning something a little more grand like this where i've got a lot of different elements um and what I do is I try to first sort of think about it in black and white and think about what the overall pattern would be. And so I, I'll often do uh, many thumbnail sketches and uh, sometimes with pastel, actually black and white pastels, I'll, I'll kind of work things out. And uh, with this particular design, I wanted her to be hit with a, with a ray of late night, uh, late, late afternoon sun, um, but she's cast half in shadow and I wanted to get a little bit of play between silhouette and, and uh, light against dark and dark against light. So I, I do these kinds of little sketches uh, to play with the idea of thinking ahead so that when I get involved with all these things I'm going to have to do, I'm not overwhelmed 
where I, I completely lose my mind and just started painting detail. This, this kind of a idea sketch keeps me, you know, on the, on the uh, right track to knowing where it is I want to take this thing. And then after I decide on the value arrangement, which like I did on that, then I'll sit there and do a, an oil sketch uh, like this to really get myself in gear as to exactly the colors I want it to have. But again, the whole time I'm doing that, I'm, I'm, st I'm still thinking about the overall design. And by the time I'm actually sitting there on the canvas and actually painting, I have a confidence then to just go forward and stick with the plan. And so uh, today, that's, that's exactly, again, I was thinking the same way. Um, so taking this and putting it aside. This is another example of a painting um, that uh, I was trying to decide how to manipulate the values and everything. And I did another black and white little sketch, and then I did a, another color. So I'm, I do this for every painting I do. I, I don't... I don't ever skip the process because it gives me a confidence of knowing where I'm going to go. So I did that for this today. In fact, I last night was trying to decide which uh, head I was going to do. And so I did a little sketch. These are some of the uh, warm ups, really uh, for uh, when I was doing that demo uh, that I talked about earlier for the pre to West and uh, just uh warming up and this is hopefully something like what i'll, I'll do in the, uh, the short time we have together morgan i gotta tell you that those are some of the most fine portraits i've ever seen in oh, any thanks. medium but i would never have guessed those to be in pastel had i not known you well you'd done that like i said i i had decided that i wanted to uh, but thank you uh well, i wanted to um do a demo quickly for somebody at the, you know, for the people at the pre to west and i thought you know, painting for me is just drawing with color. And uh, so long as I keep that mindset, uh, you can pretty much know that you're going to have something somewhat successful if you've never lost your mind and, 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 and stay with that main idea. Draw, 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 draw. And, uh, you know, when I work from life and I'm, I've got maybe a lot of people around me and, and, uh, you know, I, I can get nervous and, and I, I, I'm thinking, oh, it's going to it's going to just fall apart. And I have all these people watching me. Um, I have one single idea that keeps me going and keeps me calm. And that is draw, Morgan, draw. I just say that to myself over and over. Just draw. It doesn't matter if uh, your values are a little bit kooky right now or your edges aren't completely worked out or even the design, draw, Morgan, draw. And that usually gets me through over the hump of nervousness and keeps me focused. And I do that throughout every painting I do as I, I keep reminding myself that you're working with oil paint or you're working with, you know, now I'm using some, some pastels, but it's all still drawing, you know? And if you can keep, if you can keep that mindset uh, you can paint in watercolor, you can paint in any other medium you want. And I found out that in acrylic, I mean, in um, pastel here, uh, it was so close to oil painting that I picked, to it, picked up right away. I mean, I literally, in about two months, was able to do the demo. And I felt like, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, practiced enough with it. I'm not exactly an expert at it, but um, I'm going to put these aside. But today, um, I'm going to do this gentleman who uh, is a, a new friend of mine, and um, his name is John, and uh, he came over and he posed for me for some photographs, and uh, I wore a mask the whole time, and it's, COVID has changed a lot of my, my ways of working, but... Um, I decided to do a portrait of him. And so I, just like I do with a normal, normal painting, I was thinking, well, how will I make this special? What, what's the one kind of idea maybe that I will try and stick with, even with, for a simple head portrait? I'll continue to work on this after this shuts off. And I want to be able to, uh, you know, call this a, a finished pastel. So uh, 
I was thinking about the fact that I'm going to show you, I'm going to move my camera so you can see what I'm working from here. I'm going to have my computer screen here and I'm just going to work from him as though he's sitting in front of me. And um, you can see he's got this beautiful blue kerchief that he brought and it's a really intense color. And, you know, cowboys back then, they actually loved to use a lot of bright color. We, we always think of black and white or, or sepia all the time when we think cowboys and stuff. But they actually love to array themselves with bright colored shirts and kerchiefs. And so I want to kind of get that sense in this particular uh, pastel. So the idea is I want to make sure that that blue scarf is almost the star of the, the whole thing, really. I mean, I'm going to start on his face and everything. But in the end, I want that blue scarf to really be the element of design that, that really sets this whole thing off. And so I just wanted to come up with something that uh, with this sketch, uh, this this is going to be the basically the paper, um, the, the, the color of the paper. And then I just wanted to tie in from the top, uh, have this whole thing hanging from the top and kind of coming, dangling down, being uh, the, the scarf being the main set. Now I'm looking at the color of his uh, his shirt, which is kind of a bright yellowish orange. And uh, it does kind of distract from the whole idea of it. And so uh, looking at it right now, I think, to really stick with the idea, um, I often will change the color of something to fit the idea of the overall design. And I'm just going to go ahead and gray that out a little bit because I really want that blue scarf to be the, the whole story there. I've got a little bit of blue in that background behind him, but I actually think I might just throw in some warmth too, just so that that blue scarf really will pop. So that would make myself feel better. So now I can just sort of work about getting to the, the drawing aspect of it. And I'll just, you know, refer to this to remind myself of what it is I want to do. I won't accidentally start painting that shirt, uh, you know, a bright yellow just because I see it that way. Um, when you're doing narrative paintings, you constantly are changing the color of things to fit your idea. It's not always the funnest thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, it, it's for the overall, you know, good of the design. So enough talk, because I know I don't have a lot of time. I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side where I can see it. But um, uh, here's my canvas, as it were, as though I were painting in oil. And uh, like uh, as though I were doing a painting in oil, I would want to wash some color into this first to work into are and, you using uh, a, a pastel paper or sanded paper, or is this? This is a just a can canson paper, just normal okay. pastel canson paper. Uh, and uh, I'm going to look at my fellow here in front of me and kind of just think about it. If I was doing this in oil, I would actually be just putting some washes down that would be. Uh, his skin tone and I'll work into that skin tone and I'm looking at my sketch and I'm just vaguely getting, I don't mind if some of this gets into other things. I like the idea of bleeding color, uh, which is something that happens in watercolor. And I love bringing in what other mediums do and sort of trying to mimic it with the other, a different medium. So in this idea is the idea of like, if I was putting down a wash, in watercolor and letting it bleed into the hat or something. I, I really am not trying to uh, be careful here, obviously. Now, you're probably already saying, wow, it already looks like them. And I agree. I think I should just stop at this point, Eric, and we'll just let, let you go back now. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add some of the colors I think will be there underneath so I don't have to go and paint every single little tile of color to fill this out. I'd rather have something that's going to show through. A lot of this will just remain. So there's no point in, you know, uh, just rushing too much through it. I'm, I'm actually thinking even value uh, just a bit where his cheek is going to be a little lighter, his nose is going to be a lot lighter. Um, I, I'm actually thinking of some of the grayer areas, like his chin where he's got whiskers. So I can throw in a little bit of just gray, um, see if any of that shows through. Like a watercolor. I love watercolor too. And I love, I love the freedom of letting 
the color kind of just accidentally show up places that you wouldn't have probably put. So anything that can make that happen in a in a painting uh, that's a more opaque kind of uh, medium like this or or oil, I um, I I try I try to do anything I can to make that accident happen. Now I'm kind of rubbing it with my finger to get it embedded into the paper so that when I start working over this, uh, it won't even come up and destroy the value of, of whatever I put over it because it's pretty embedded. It's like it's like a wash. It truly is. It's just like in, in oil. So it gives me a place to start. And once I get to this point, I just pretty much have to click into... Uh, well, actually, before I do that, I, I actually see his eye socket and I can kind of I can kind of just indicate a little bit of slightly darker values where I know I'm going to end up darkening some of the half tone in that area. I don't normally like to think too much about half tone at this point. Um, and Eric, if I ever say any words that you I know you've done this to many artists where you make me define things you you go right ahead and just tell me right, to, I'll do to that define. I'll but, stay on top um, of it I'm assuming probably everybody knows what a half done is at this point but uh and you've done such a good job you know educating the world really uh, I was thinking about it with all the work that you've done with art instruction and where I was when I was in school uh you know, uh, 40 years ago, um, there was nothing there. There really wasn't anything to, uh, well, obviously no internet, but even videos, you know, were very rare. I think Daniel Green was the only guy that I remember having a real video that somebody had bootlegged and brought into art school. But, uh, you know, wow, so much is available now. There's no excuse for not knowing the principles and the fundamentals of art. So uh, now that I've got that down, I'm going to start drawing and getting something fairly quickly, hopefully. Uh, I'm using a, a little bit darker um, Are these hard or soft pastel? This one is like a medium uh, that I'm drawing with. I'm just sort of getting my, my, my bearings. I'm, I'm jumping in and I'm just sort of uh, Okay, so I'll start going softer and softer, but this one is a little bit of a hard. And I have a mix of uh, different brands. I, I uh, ordered a few. I can't even remember now what these brands are. But since they're not paying me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, they're fairly good. They were fairly expensive. I think the whole set originally, I'm, I'm using here, I should show... This is one tray. Um, let me see. Where's the camera? I can't see the the thing when I'm working here. Yeah, you uh, got it. You got it. You know, I I what I did was I got two or three sets of different types, and then I um I broke them down into the flesh tones that I'm going to probably always be jumping into, and then my my tans, and then my my darker browns and browns, and then uh, I've also got. My greens, my blue, my grays, my blues, and then the bright colors that are going to be just once in a while for accents. But uh, oh. anyways, I'm getting distracted by something right there. Uh, anyways, uh, because of the way I've set it down, I can jump now right into all the, the original uh, uh, sets of every color of flesh tone. So I can really go pretty quickly here. Um, th this is the one limitation I do find, though, which is, you know, when I'm painting an oil, I can really mix exactly what I want. With with a pastels, I'm finding myself uh, compromising on color uh, for a long time. And then it's not till the end that I, I try to incorporate maybe a little bit closer to maybe some of the things I'm seeing in the model. But in the beginning, I'm just using value and general color. But... You know, I, it's not like every single value is there at my disposal, at least not in my set. Uh, pastels are expensive, so I I think I spent, you know, like 300 on the first set, and then I still felt very limited 
um, on values for every color I wanted. But, you know, what you lose in, in that, you make up for in speed when you're having to uh, do things, too. Uh, uh, this is apropos for, for later on. You're showing my video of paying for the impatient. And um, that's, uh, this, is, this is great for impatient people. Uh, pastels are, are wonderful because they are such a, a faster medium. I did that video uh, two or three years after the first one, which is called Homework, because I had been um, told by, by a few impatient people that my process takes too long uh, from that other one. It's just, it, it's, it's a 10 hour video, that, that first video. And it's, <laughs> I, I did not speed the, the process up. It's really just how I paint. And I felt sorry for so many people that had to endure it. Uh, even though I think it, it contains, you know, everything you could possibly get from me. Um, I decided to do that painting for the impatient for those people that take a class and don't have 10 hours to do a painting. And, you know, you have to change your mindset with time limits. And, uh, and so everything changes when you've only got an hour and a half or a three hour you know, workshop that you're sitting in. And, uh, and so I, uh, I did that video to just show a way to approach painting in a much quicker way. So you're at about the 15 minute mark. And I, I'm just curious, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't put highlights in until the very end, but it looks like you're kind of building up your lights now. Well, they're not really, um, I'm using the, the lighter I'm getting my, my bearings on overall value of average, but I'm using my average, uh, flesh tone pastel as an eraser. And at this stage of the game, I'm already trying to just nail the shapes. And so when I, when this goes out of bounds, this comes in like an eraser to correct it. Cause there is no erasing, you know, in this regard. So I'm already just sort of jumping in, and letting these two be in my hands so that I'm, I'm there constantly correcting. If you see a highlight, it's, it's more like a landmark for me to know where I'm going, but it probably will disappear too, um, just as quickly. Uh, cause I'm just drawing right now. And as soon as I get a landmark eye or something to anchor on, so I'll go very quickly. So, um, if I were to just do the whole thing with this, uh, I would already be in a mindset of uh, I'm letting this go, letting that go. But instead, I'm, I'm actually going back and now and I'm going to try and actually draw or paint what I see here in the photo and really nail the shapes. Now, the other little lesson I was hoping to get across, but it's just, you know, you have big ideas when you say you're going to do a demo and it all goes out the window. But uh, while I'm doing this, I'm trying to say to myself, you know, draw, Morgan, draw. But it's what I'm saying I'm, I'm trying to draw. And I'm not trying to draw detail for detail or anything. I'm just trying to draw light shapes that help tell the story and get me where I want to go. And... Um, I'm not worried about half tones right now. Now, at this stage, you can see that I'm also not trying to nail the values because that's a, a little bit of a lighter value than in the darks than should be there. But um, that's going to bother me as I keep going forward. So I'm I am going to just throw in if I can find the right uh, color. That's the one thing about it, is a. Uh, at, while you're working with pastels, anyone who does pastels, you know that if you don't put down your pastels back in the right place, then it's just that much harder to find them again. And then you start holding them in your hand, wondering where everything is. It takes a little while to get your bearings. Anyways, now I've got a little bit more of the value that, of where my darks will go. And at this stage, I'm going to keep moving forward and... Um, I'm squinting down and I'm 
trying to look at overall shapes, like where this eye socket is, I can see, I'll, I can just draw very lightly so you can see what kinds of things I'm looking for. Um, since I won't have time to go back in, during the time of this video, I'm trying to also get a little bit of the detail in. But I'm measuring, I'm measuring, I'm measuring, I'm getting all the things I need to get an accurate to what I see drawing down. I'm lining things up. Tear duck to tear duck. Looking for relationships from eye to eye. Yeah, those are the things that will ruin this, this whole thing is if I don't nail the drawing aspect and drawing of the darks, which are defining the overall likeness of this person. Um, the half tones are not telling the story. It's the darks that are placed perfectly that tell the story of his likeness. And if I don't nail that and spend a, a little bit of time on that, then no matter how many fancy little strokes I put in later with the side of the pastel and it looks all flashy, it's still not going to work because they're not in the right place. Something's out of place. So it's worth the time taken. And it can be, this is the boring part to watch. I, I, I always feel for people who are watching a demo and it's just measuring is not a romantic, flourishy thing. It's just hard work. And it takes a long time when you're working on a big gallery piece to get all the measurements down. It's just, you have to have patience. So I'm using kind of this mid-tone dark so that I can then go back and take like this middle, uh, this what I call an average skin tone to draw in maybe some of the light shapes that I see. There's this triangular thing. Let me remind everybody like what I'm looking at. So, and if this isn't the right place, please, Eric, you're gonna have to remind me that, to move this. No, this, you're doing great. Okay, this phone is like right <laughs> near my chest. I'm surprised I haven't knocked it a few times already. You got about 12 minutes. Wow. I'm going to have to. Time I'm flies gonna, when you're having fun, doesn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. When you're talking too much, yeah. Well, and you've got, we've got several new viewers today from India, Saudi Arabia, uh, and Egypt. Wow. That's great. No pressure. Yeah, really. Um, <laughs> I, I use a, something straight, usually a pencil, to just shoot some plumb lines down. And I'm, I'm shooting a plumb line down and seeing that the nostril is lined up as usual with the tear duct. And now all I do is just use um, a little bit of a half tone. I'm, I'm measuring from here to here, um, getting where that cheek crease is. But I know that this nostril now is going to line up about here. So it's just a matter of judging how far down his nose is, how large his nose is. Uh, sometimes I'll look at, you know, the, uh, the triangle that it can create. And it's just a right about in that area. Um, you can do other landmarks. Once again, I could go like that and look here. But it, it's kind of important where you finally nail where you say the nostril is because it's going to indicate whether you get the length of the rest of the face correctly, whether he's going to have a long face or a short face, or I'm just plotting my way along. This is, this is the part where you just got, got to be patient. I, I would love to jump in with highlights and fun strokes, but I'm just trying to work my way slowly to just get the main areas that need to be done. Now, 
I'm going to check the tip of the nose with my plumb line. It comes down right about here with the white of the eye. It's right where I put it. Um, down. I'm squinting, looking at shapes. There's so much to say about this shapes, shapes, shapes. Um, everybody summarizes the principles of art differently. I've always said you can boil everything down to shapes, values, edges, and color. And when I teach a workshop, um, I always boil it down to those four things. And I say shapes instead of saying drawing because the way that I like to continue to always see when I'm drawing is just looking for shapes divorced from what it is. It's the old using the right side of the brain thinking. So there I've got probably like five minutes left just to get to the nose. But uh, it's really not enough time to do a decent thing here, Eric, but sad. Very sad. I'm very sad right now. Look at it. I'm sorry. I'm very sad too. I'm going to really speed up some of the measurements now and just sort of see how quickly I can speed it up, Morgan. Okay. I'm working my way down to the length of the, the head, the length of his head. You know, you can, you can go the route of, you know, oh, it's a half, 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 or thirds, 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 whatever your measurements you've been taught that everything goes. But I really like to not use a formula too much about, uh, oh, it, the eyes are always here and the eyebrows are always here. Because I find so many varied changes that you, you just can't go that route and expect to get a likeness of the exact person you're looking at. So I just literally just let it happen in front of me. What I see is where I put it rather than um, the old formulas I was taught. Even, you know, it's good to learn them. Uh, Andrew Loomis got great charts uh, about the proportions of the head, and you should always know what the ideal proportions are. But um, honestly, uh, there's so much variance between person to person that you shouldn't let that formula get in the way. Okay, I'm just zooming along now because be a shame if I don't get a little further here. So if I wasn't rushing it, I'd probably have switched up pastels a little more often, but I'm going to use this one to just get almost all the darks figured out, looking at big overall shapes. I'm going to knock in the core of some of the large shapes where the chin is. I'm, I'm just going to take a wild gamble here and say that really is the bottom of the chin. Now with pastel, you can still make plenty of corrections, um, just like an oil. I find I can really actually... Um, erase just about anything by just going over it with another soft pastel. It's, it's really kind of fun because then it creates a whole nother like color vibrance thing that goes on when you just layer it. I never get upset if I have to correct something. It just adds to the overall texture of everything. And I'm just trying to paint the way the cast shadow is defining the mustache and upper muzzle. The cast shadows are, are, are little helpers in telling the story. If you get the cast shadow going over the form correctly, it tells the whole story without having to draw what's inside. Um, I have a whole thing that was taught to me when I was in art school, which was my teacher showed me how the actual areas inside the light and inside the shadow are not important it's only important where the two meet and he used to he used to emphasize that he'd do this beautiful head demo for us 
and with a you know nice large shadow area maybe on the side of the face and then he would um he would do uh tic-tac-toe like this and he'd play tic-tac-toe inside it and he goes does it still look like him and we go yeah see it doesn't matter <laughs> don't spend so much time in the shadows it's the what's in the light it's just what's in the light and really where the two meet that everything is important now, do you do you follow the principle of putting a higher chroma where the light and shadow meet, or a bed bug line, or something like that? You know, again, I am I'm all for formulas and ideas like that, but I don't find necessarily it always happens that way. Uh, it depends on the color of the light, the source of the light, the strength of the light, all kinds of other things. So I don't just automatically go. But yes, in general, I will find that probably the truest color of the flash, for instance, is in that, that, that area of transition, right? In that area, you'll find maybe the warmest color. If it's a cool, cool light, you'll find your warmest areas as they start to go towards the shadow. Um, but I, I do like to just sort of react to what I see too. I don't like to um, say that, oh, I just have to fit with that complete idea and then everything looks the same. You're about the four minute mark, five minute uh, mark. Maybe. You got to be right. kidding me. You got to be know. kidding me. It goes quickly, doesn't it? Boy, I am disappointed in you, really. Just thought you were going to give me more time. This is really disappointing. You just have to trust me. I, I can feel it. This one is going to work out. It would have. Um, the, the color of the paper itself is obviously, now that I toned it too, um, going to stay a lot of it. You can see a lot of it worked out well for me in terms of probably what can happen. If I, in this particular light source, he does have light planes of his face, definitely catching some lighter what you might want to call highlights or lighter planes. I don't like to use the word highlight too often, but uh, highlight definitely can apply. And I'm squinting down and I'm just looking for just some of those key spots. I'm keying it right now. I'm, I'm moving forward into that idea just so I can get a little bit more happening here. It's, it's unfor I, I maybe should have started a little of this so that I could get to the fun part because the fun part's just starting to happen. <laughs> The fun part is when I start to really get in there and um, paint, you know, so far it's just been plotting. But well, I'll tell you what, if you want, if you want to buy some extra time, I can give you 15 more, but we just have to know that those of those of you watching on some platforms might get cut off and have to find it on another platform. That's up to you, Morgan, if you want to do it. Oh, sure. I, I wouldn't mind 15 more minutes. Um, All right. Be fun. So. All right. You, you know. got it. Now, just it, for those of you who are watching, you might lose it on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. I'm not sure where you're going to lose it. So uh, in case you do, just look for a streamline art video on either Facebook or YouTube. And uh, hopefully it'll continue. If not, you can watch the replay later. Got a new viewer from Colombia. Welcome, Colombia. Everybody's saying, yay, more time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with that, a little bit of extra time, I'd like to define just a little bit more the rest of the areas of the head. I, I would love to at least key where the blue is going to, uh, the blue scarf is going to show up. I find that even if you can't get to the whole thing, it's always a good idea to at least get a spot of it just so you can reference it and reflect it into some of the other colors. Um, I, 
I paint a lot with my finger when I am painting in oil. And so I end up really loving how pastel also lends to doing that. And uh, the one thing, though, is, boy, my finger is embedded with that by the end of this thing. <laughs> and I have to be sure to keep wiping my finger as I'm touching the, the uh, you know, I use this. And I also have some wet wipes to kind of clean my finger because it's nothing worse than taking something real dirty right into the flesh tones, for instance. So I'm constantly wiping my finger just like a brush would be constantly. So I'm going to try to find a decent blue just to key it to so I can at least see it. I'd have to say that I'm not really seeing a, a good blue in this group that I have ready. I'm just going to use more of a turquoisey for now. I can always warm it up. I'm just going to interrupt real quickly. For those of you who are at the end of the broadcast, uh, you may pop off. Uh, we're going to go long today. We normally go one hour because some mediums will cut us off, but uh, we're going to continue. So look for us at Streamline Art Video on Facebook or YouTube and you should find it. If not, watch the replay. Um, and if you can't continue after the one hour mark uh, because of lunch or whatever, I understand, but thank you for watching. Our guest is Morgan Fre uh, Morgan Friedley, right? West Wesley, <laughs> and and uh, and uh, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur. Also, check out realismlive.com. You're going to want to go to that. Okay, we're going to continue on and hope it doesn't cut off. All right. I, I'm not going to waste my time at the moment just drawing a hat for you guys. I'm going to get back into the face just so we can have something to play with. Um, the ear is going to go there. So I'm going to throw in a wash now of where that ear would probably go. And uh, the ear is kind of in a mysteriously shaded area whereas the hat is starting to cause it to go into shadow it's a fun range of values there subtle though so i'm going to go in now and start i feel like i've got it overall like plotted out and i'm going to start throwing in what i would do if i were painting it in oil which which would be now my half tones so my half tones are going to not go too dark i try to maintain my lights as much as possible so that they don't get uh, you know too muddy and um, there are some key darker half tones, though, that are telling the story of the form that I can't ignore. Otherwise, it'll just be a little bit too flat. But this is where I start working in the light. But again, nothing in the light should ever go so dark that it confuses the overall structural quality of light and shadow. Um, there's plenty of rules I could go over. But I will to concentrate so the trick with pastels is literally just having a lot of pastels uh, at this stage because um, yeah you can mix it, it it's it I do I put one pastel over another and kind of mix them to create but it's it, it definitely um, it, it's a nicer thing to do if you have just a lot to choose from because it's a cleaner Thing. At this stage, uh, like a brush stroke, you start wanting to leave strokes down in bold ways. Um, using the side. I'm looking for a better half tone, uh, something that's a little darker. And I, I like putting down like tiles of color with oil. I do the same thing with my pastels where you just boldly put down a nice squared off plane and uh, not get too precious about it and just put it down and always know that your draftsmanship can always come back and save something. Always rely on your ability to draw. If you've drawn it once, you can draw it again. Don't, don't be afraid to lose something that... That's great advice. You, you have to have courage. You know, you just go... You know, I've worked hard to be able to learn to draw. I'm I'm not going to pretend like I can never do it again. I know I could do it again. Just, 
It's like uh, falling off a bike. You got to fall off a few times and realize that you won't get hurt and you just move forward that way. Just pumping up that a bit to give myself a fuller range of value. Um, as I go further down his face, the half tones all can go down and also at this stage be a little bit more aware of the grays. I'm going to break this. His, his whole lower you know, we're talking face. about the, the uh, principle that's often taught about uh, the colors and color bands and the different areas of the face. We talked about the gray and that. Yeah, um, there is just a general, I, and I hate formulas, but uh, there is a general idea, as we know on a man's face especially, uh, the whiskers and the overall beard uh, buildup cr creates, first of all, more of a gray area at the lower band of the face. You're, you find a, a, a more pinkish, reddish uh, quality towards the nose and the cheeks where a lot of the blood goes to. And then your top of your head can go a little more yellow. Uh, often hair or hats often don't let the sun give it the same quality. So, you know, there are these bands of color um, and values that, that take place. And I do kind of pay attention, especially with a cowboy. When I'm doing women, I... I, I have obviously there's the pinkish hues and stuff that go around the cheeks and, and stuff, but you don't want to play up a red nose or you don't want to obviously give her a beard. So the rules are different between men and women, which is why I like to do men portraits in that regard, because there's a little bit more freedom of, of color. I love to throw in, um, what I you know call vibrating color, like on this guy's face, there's there's uh, some nice cools that are even around the eyes, um, which you it's often you'll find, and I'll throw in things like this where I'll just it's a more of an intuitive thing. I'll look up there, I see it on the model, and I, I you can sort of sense a cool. If you open your eyes and you analyze it too much. Um, It'll disappear sometimes, but I don't mind a little bit of overall vibrating blues or greens or purples once in a while coming through. Um, I actually see it adds a little bit of realism, uh, a little bit of detail without actually putting in detail. It just gives the sense of it. Rockwell was, was a master at that. If you look at like a hand that he would do. It wouldn't really be as much modeling as people think. It was it was all done with vibrating color. There's so much that you can get across just with that. You know, hands have veins that run through them that are blue and and got red knuckles. It's just like a face. It's just some beautiful things to look out for. I'm cleaning my finger. I'm going to do a little bit of blending this in a way just to see where I'm at. And um, squint down. You know, the eye has these wonderful little indications of the fact that it's the only wet thing truly, you know, on that head. And it does glisten and have just a little bit of a highlight here and there that it indicates that, and you never want to have eyes that just look dry. You never want them to, to look like they're made of the same color flesh or anything that's there. They, they truly are different in that they're wet all the time. Well, uh, uh, can you tell us what the color is you're highlighting that, getting that wetness in? Um, a lighter version of the flesh. Um, okay. 
right. uh, just a very light flesh color sometimes, or it depends on the color of the light. In this particular case, you're safer in that way uh, if you most of the time go towards that color of the flesh. You're going to love this comment. Tirtha from India says, Morgan, watching you draw and paint is the closest thing we can get to watching the golden age of American illustrators paint like they did years ago. You are a real inspiration to us all. Oh, thank you so much. I, um, I will write a check soon and send it right off to India. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that is truly a, a, the source of much of my inspiration as an artist is, is the golden age of illustration. Um, my own teacher used to have Dean Cornwell come in and sit once in a while uh, and, and teach because Frank Riley was his teacher at the Art Students League. Back to, and I was just taught to appreciate and love all things uh, at that time of, of the golden age. And um, I, I've never R gotten Riley that out of Riley taught Cornwell, did you say? Yeah, Frank Riley. Mm. Um, yeah, and Riley did a lot of recording of, of rock, of of Cornwell um, doing some things too. There's some, there's a video of him painting and Riley was the one that actually uh, did the filming of that too. But um, yeah, Dean Cornwell was like one of those names that you, you often would hear <laughs> during class, <laughs> all of us that were, were studying with, with Fred at the time. Um, you know, we revered any drawing by Dean Cornwell. In fact, the very first day of class, uh, I was 15 and I walked in and um, Fred, my teacher said, you know, okay, sit down and draw for me so I can see where, where you're at, you know, and I, he gave me a, a photo, actually, it wasn't from life yet. He, he, he gave me an Indian face, actually, of all things. And uh, I did, a, you know, a decent job of at my age of, of drawing it and that very first day he sat down with a piece of tracing paper and he goes let me show you how dean cornwell would have done it <laughs> and i didn't even know who he was talking about and that from that point on it was just a constant source of well, let me show you what dean cornwell would do <laughs> and um i took that uh drawing that he did that very first day which would be hundreds later and uh I have it on my wall to remind myself of some of the lessons. This was the drawing that Fred did over my drawing. And the whole lesson, here I was, very first day of class, he was showing me the relationships that you, you want to look for and emphasize from eye to eye, from cheek to cheek. There was a whole abstraction that he gave us a, a, a framework to memorize and then look for beautiful flowing rhythms throughout everything. And... Uh, I was like, that's a pretty heavy lesson, first day of class, <laughs> but but it really sunk in, you know, and uh, and to this day that that lesson is always there. In fact, while I'm working on this, you know, I'm dying to get to that aspect of of emphasizing some of those relationships, but I can't do that in the beginning. That's that's like one of the fun little things, but I'm going to want to relate everything, some plain to the plane here, you know, really emphasize a relationship between eyebrows, you know, one for here and find that invisible string. He used to call it a string of pearls sometimes, you know, you have one one line here, but all of a sudden you put, put it here, but your, your arm flowed and your eye, I don't know if you can see, your eye automatically connects to anything that connects on that flow line. And you can break away from it, but that eye will always want to connect something that's on that same flow line. Well, you do the same thing with eyes. You do the same thing with eyebrows. Um, this mustache is going to have like beautiful spots like here and here. And then the eye connects those two species. You can break it up everywhere and you can lose edges and I haven't even talked about edges yet, but um, those are the fun, you know, last stages of a painting, last stages of, of this pastel where I'm going to go to town. Unfortunately, we're going to cut off before I get to go to town. But um, gosh, you know, that's the part where I just can't get enough of it. That 
that that's the stuff that makes me want to be an artist is uh, relationships and rhythms. It's the stuff that makes me still to this day look at a Nikolai Feshin painting and just be in awe of all those invisible little relationships that he would put in. And um, you see them and you realize, oh my gosh, you know, he'll do a, he'll do a head. He did a head so many without any light and shadow on them at all. There's such flat lighting on so many of, of Feshin's uh, paintings and drawings. And it was because he he had a whole other idea in mind, which was to emphasize those relationships. And you can see so much of it when you have more flat lighting. Um, and he's, he just went ahead and relied totally on flat lighting so much of the time and just went crazy with those relationships. But sometimes you don't notice them because he went so crazy with all his brushwork too. And you didn't realize that underneath all of that, were these beautiful hidden lines. I mean, you look at his drawings, you can understand how he painted. And that's that was a key understanding for me is studying the drawings of painters to understand how they painted. Um, you know, like Andrew Zorn etchings are a complete blueprint of how he thought while he painted. He's telling you everything you need to know right there. It's like uh, little secret art lessons in every drawing. And Fashion did that, showing all these secret little relationships that he was he was doing, but most people were missing. So funny to talk and not get response. Uh, my daughter. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was, no, no, no. My daughter. My I'm, I'm not picking on you. My daughter is teaching art at this moment online. Um, and she teaches high school art classes and and she says they you know she's having to do it by zoom because they're not allowed to be in class still and she goes she'll she'll talk for half an hour with no they they can't respond their mics are turned off and she said i feel like i'm just talking to myself you know <laughs> like yeah i know how that feels huh. you just you just feel like you're talking to yourself really fun to watch this develop and and just see how adding each each little element the edges and so on makes a huge difference darks reinforcing you guys enjoying this if you are put a comment in the in the comments section and i'll encourage morgan to go in tonight and uh look at the comments if he wants to and of course he's going to be on today at 3 p.m at streamline art video on youtube or facebook uh with his other video uh, this is, of course, this is a special moment where he's doing a video live, but he's going to be uh, doing his video painting for the impatient, which is this video here. And uh, he also has another video uh, called in the studio with Morgan and it's called homework. And that shows his oil painting process is 10 hour video. And I put that in the link for everybody. I will um, tune in like I did on the last one too. And I'll be there uh, making comments along with you. I will um, answer questions to anybody while that video is running. I'm not, I guess it's going to start from the beginning, but. Um, I, I think, you know, they, they uh, randomly choose a segment because they can't play the whole video, but they'll, they'll show a, a segment of it for <clears throat> roughly an hour. So. Right. So wherever it's at, if there's questions, I can always, I'll, I'll make comments one way or the other about how horrible I felt that day or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you can remember that far back. Oh, I, I remember. I hate, I hated doing videos, you know, um, it's, it's really, it's really not the funnest thing in the world for me to do because well it's you gotta paint you gotta talk, and talk at the same time it's just yeah you know in general. Yeah. well you're doing a great job now you're a good teacher no oh, thanks um i think if i were doing it all the time i could get more into the groove of it it's been a while I, i've been stuck to the easel for so many years just painting and you know you get a little used to not talking but uh there was a time when I was doing more workshops and stuff, and I, I really do enjoy it. 
when I'm when I'm in the midst of it. The, the so feedback. We're at the, uh, we're at the one fifteen mark in Eastern time, so I think we're going to have to kind of got to make a couple announcements and drop off. So more. All right. You've done a just amazing to watch this come together. Uh, if you'd be willing, if you're going to finish it, uh, then uh, yeah. if you would post it in the comments or something or post it online. So that I we will. Can... Yeah. And then Morgan will be on today at uh, three. Why don't you come on camera real quick? Can you do that? Can you turn yeah, around? Sure. Because a lot of people tuning in late didn't get a chance to, to meet you face to face. All right. Here I am. <laughs> Here's my messy can't, studio. Can't see you. There, we, there messy, we are. My messy studio behind me. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, again, I'll be at three o'clock. I'll be taking questions. You can even ask questions about this if uh, if uh, you have any. Fabulous. Well, thanks again. Thumbs up and applause for for Morgan Weisling. Yay, Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. I want to remind I want to remind everybody that we have uh, Morgan on at 3 p.m. today, and you can go to YouTube or Facebook and just look up Streamline Art Video. Just put it in the the um, search bar, and also Morgan's website. You can visit and you can see you know just everything there, uh, MorganWeisling.com. And of course, uh, if you go to lilyartvideo.com or lilypubs.com, you can search his name and you can find his videos. Today at 3 p.m. when he's on, we offer a discount. Uh, we normally don't get a chance to do that, but we do do it every day during the video. So if you want a discount on that video, uh, just go ahead and put it in. There's a discount code that will be provided in the comments section. And I um, want to remind you guys, uh, first off, um, we're going to be doing an event called Watercolor Live. And yes, we have on in the planning process, we're working to, we haven't confirmed that, but we're probably going to do Pastel Live as well. Maybe we'll have Morgan back for that to do a portrait session. But we are, the next big thing that we're doing is called Realism Live. And that's coming up in October <clears throat> next month. The deadline to save $200 is the end of this month. We have an amazing lineup of artists. Uh, you can see them at realismlive.com. I'm just going to play real quickly this promo for you. Do you wish you could draw or paint but lack the confidence? Many people think it requires natural talent, yet anyone can learn to draw or paint. You could spend 3000 or more to attend a live workshop or convention, or you can learn it from the world's finest for a fraction of the cost at Realism Live, the world's first virtual online art conference devoted to realism. Four days of world-class artists demonstrating in portraiture, landscapes, still life, the human figure, flowers, color mixing, drawing, painting, and more. Realism Live, October 21st through the 24th. And for people who want to learn painting from scratch, start with our Beginner's Day on October 20th. Soon you'll be painting faces, people, flowers, scenery, objects, and other subjects. You'll see your artwork get better faster as you learn from top artists from all over the world. Make history as part of the world's first Realism Art Conference. Sign up today and join the world as we learn art together. From the publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plein Air, and Realism Today. Realism Live. Sign up today. Thanks again to Morgan Weisling and, and for being on today. Make sure to sign up for Realism Live. Uh, go to realismlive.com. That's the easy thing to do. And then you can, you can find it uh, uh, and get a discount if you get in before the end of the month. Uh, Morgan Weisling was our guest today. My name is Eric Rhodes. Tomorrow, maybe, I'm hoping to have the big announcement on, on so there are people doing guesses in the comments section, but they're wrong. So, um, Got a big announcement coming up, and we'll just get that sometime this week, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, I'm here every day at 12 noon, and then we're every day at 3. We're giving you 
a video uh, samples of some of the videos we've produced. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Fun Air Magazine, here for you 180 days straight in a row, and uh, even slipping out to go up to Fall Color Week's location, take some pictures and come back down, find some things for the painting map that I'm putting together, and still here for you guys. So thank you for being here every day. Again, thumbs up and thank you to Morgan. If you have uh, comments, put them in the comments section. Remember, we're giving away a digital subscription to Plein Air Magazine. Uh, all issues for a year, um, and we're going to pick somebody from the comments. Got a lot of folks from around the world who are watching. Thank you for watching everywhere, no matter where you are in the U.S. and Canada, Mexico, and around the world. We really appreciate it, and we will be here for you every day. Thanks again, and have a really terrific day. And 